Hey, what is happening, everybody out there? Um, coming to you live from Hampton Roads, Virginia. Uh, super excited for this show that we have on here. Got a, a super dope guest, um, and obviously some. It's a bunch of things that's going on in the world, a little bit different than when it was when uh, we did last week's show. And speaking of last week's show, uh, just to recap it. It was great. First time I ever had, um, I had like a total of four people uh, and one was my wife. She was a guest um, as well as uh, Patrick, comedian, national comedian, and his wife is an entrepreneur. So we had some great relationship conversations. Uh, so if you guys missed that, you can always go back, um, you know, and find those episodes. This is uh Realistically, this is episode number five. So, um, um, yeah, yeah, it's been going well. Uh, I would like you guys to uh, obviously hit share, uh, connect with people, uh, let folks know, let your friends know. I'll be giving away some quarantine cash. I know some people, you know, still needing a little bit of help financially, and that's what I want to want to be able to do. Um, so, just make sure that you guys share those. Uh, Share your posts with, with your friends and also chime in. Let people know, uh, let us know where you're listening from, whether it's North Carolina, whether it's Florida, Texas, Virginia, it doesn't matter. Just chime in and I will put your comments up so people can see. Cool? All right. So I did recap last week's show. And before I get into anything about this show, there was an interesting daily word. If you guys follow me, I do uh, post like a daily word um, every every other day or every day, especially if it hits me hard. And today's daily word, ironically, because today is, I believe it's hashtag uh, Blackout Tuesday, obviously for the fallen, um, Mr. George Floyd here. So we're, we're going to keep his icon there the entire night uh, as me and my guests will be talking. But this is what today's word is, okay? And can't make this up. It's uh, Tuesday, June 2nd, and the word is compassion, okay? My compassion flows as I see myself in others, all right? Um, whether someone I know is in a state of celebration, uh, tribulation, or somewhere in between, I try to understand what they're going through and love them unconditionally. Uh, how I react to people in my life shows me a part of myself. Uh, some of my best teachers are those whom I've had you know, been in odds with. Um, I embrace every opportunity for personal growth amid conflict, and I exercise patience as I communicate with others. I practice thinking, speaking, and also acting um, from a consciousness of love. I feel my oneness with others. Looking into the eyes of another, I see myself, and my heart swells with compassion and empathy. With gratitude, I listen love and I serve. And then the scripture that comes out of uh, Colossians, uh, I believe chapter three, verse 12 says, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. So that's what I wanted to start this uh, episode off with is just compassion. And the things that we'll be talking about is stuff that everybody needs to hear coming from the perspective of, um, you know, two people with clear experience here in the black community, obviously. So, uh, but before we get this show started, as of most of you already know, my brand of uh, comedy is quality comedy. That's all fun, no filth. We keep the profanity and the vulgarity out. Um, you know, and just like my quality comedy series, I always give stuff away, but I can't give away raffle prizes like I always do. So during this time, I give away quarantine cash. So uh, we have a pretty cool thing. Today, I'll have two. Um, these are. Uh, trivia questions that I usually ask, and you have to be on live, and you have to be a part of the comments um, to answer them, okay? And so I'll ask a trivia question, and the first one to put the correct answer in the comments will get the cash, whether it's your cash app, so make sure you put your cash app or your Zillow or whatever that stuff is, or your PayPal, and I'll make sure that I send it right to you after this broadcast ends. But I'm going to do two of those tonight because last week uh, the winner said, Thank you. I don't really need that. You can pass it on to somebody else. So tonight I'll be giving away two separate amounts of twenty five dollars of quarantine cash. So definitely you got to pay attention to the whole segment because you never know when I'll ask those questions. All right. Um, outside of that, I can't promise you my guests will, you know, maintain the quality comedy thing because 
He's a brother that's very free spirited, but he did assure me that he'll respect me the best he can. But we will be passionate about some of the subject matter tonight. So don't be alarmed. I'm not changing the quality comedy brain if you hear any profanity. OK. Um, and finally, before we recognize uh our guest, let's recognize our sponsor for the show, okay? So our, our sponsor today is T Senior Management LLC for your business management, talent management, project management needs, including special events, publicist work, as well as consulting and public relations. Uh, you can call 757-335-6154, or you can visit uh, tseniormanagement.com, or you can follow her. If you go in the description, uh, you'll also see her tag, so you'll be able to follow her on Facebook as well as Instagram. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our first guest to the show. Uh, let me tell y'all something about this brother. Uh, I met him probably about four years ago. No, I'm sorry, about six years ago because we were on a big project together. We'll talk just a brief, briefly about that. Uh, but he's worked for one of the biggest, uh, uh, you know, companies online as far as social media content and just media content, uh, Buzzfeed. Uh, he's a writer. He's an actor. He's a, <laughs> an Oscar award winner in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the show. My man, Zeus. Campbell, how you doing there, Zeus? Hi, Mr. Carr. How you doing, man? Happy to be here. Hey, man. Me. Yes, sir, man. Look, I'm happy that you're here, bro. Um, you know, I see that you always representing your home VA. Got Highway 64 on there. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, my new clothing label, uh, Virginia 64 Clothing and Apparel, uh, that I started this year. And, um, you know, just really just excited to be back home and, um, you know, everything that's going on out in L.A. Uh, actually provided me the opportunity to, uh, you know, come back to Virginia and, and really get back on the home soil of where I started. Yeah. And I miss home, man. So I'm be here. Good, good. Well, uh, you and I met in the fall of 2014, man. Do you remember that, man, uh, on the stage play, the cast of A Raisin in the Sun? That was my first time meeting you. Yeah. Um, and and just been impressed with who you were as a person, like how dedicated you are to your craft of acting. Um, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I wish we could have toured, you know, a lot more with it. But just that 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 night, those two shows were just magical. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are good times, man. Um, you know, I remember that show. I remember meeting you and uh, being very impressed uh, how comfortably and uh, confidently you carried uh as the leading man that 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 you know that role and you you set a really good work ethic and that was my first time actually doing live theater so i was a little bit uh apprehensive about it so i appreciate you know just everything that i learned from you and the other actors up there you know so shout out to marlon and everybody from the cast you know shout out to everybody man appreciate that it was a good learning experience Absolutely, man. Um, you know, and shout out to uh, Avi. Uh, she's one of our avid viewers that always tunes in. So, hey, people, uh, you know, if you want to get a shout out on here, just post it. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, any anything that you want us to talk about uh, while we're in the moment, uh, definitely feel free to uh, post those on here. Now, what I want to ensure uh, normally with the comedy guest, uh, I mean, we are talking just laughing and but we get into some good nuggets. Well, tonight it's going to be slightly different because of of just the temperature of what this country is 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 dealing with. Um, it's no secret what's going on. Have uh, George Floyd's uh, avatar right there is going to be a part of the entire show uh, today in and of itself is uh, Blackout Tuesday. Uh, so I got my hoodie, my black stuff on. Uh, so um, it's just it's just been it's been kind of crazy, uh, to say the least. And, you know, kind of give me your uh, feedback on 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 what you're feeling, Zeus, uh, just to let the viewers know. Uh, well, you know, I'm just like everyone else. You know, I, I think everyone, you know, I'm feeling a multitude of things um, and not all the things that I'm feeling are um, going to be. You know, it's so interesting when you have so many different nuances going on. You got to think about it. We really have a lot of things going on at once. It's not just one particular thing. You know, we have uh, COVID that's going on and people who are experiencing, you know, the highest unemployment that we've ever had. Right. So people are really stressed about money. Then also you have people who are locked in the house and we've been locked in the house for months. That, and then, you know, you have, of course, we have to focus on things like this, you know, us dying in the street. Um, which is really a modern day lynching, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, to have your knee on somebody's neck for nine minutes 
And a lot of people, for those that don't know, this was all started over um, a counterfeit $20 bill. And it wasn't yeah. even counterfeit. It was alleged counterfeit. And, um, you know, you really have to, that's a sobering moment when you say, wow, this man, George Floyd, died for $20. So I Ooh. understand why people in the street right now, this is the eighth day that people are, are protesting. And I understand people being angry in the streets. And uh, I just understand a lot of things. So as a black man, I'm very upset. I'm angry. Um, and I should be, I think, as any person of color. And, I don't, and, and the interesting thing is this feels different than the other protests and riots that have come before this. And the yeah. reason I say it feels different is because a lot of the people that are in the street actually, you know, damn near more than, than black people are not of color. So the message is getting out to white people and, you, you know, to say, hey, something has not been right. Now that you guys are starting to see it plain and simple the way that we've been seeing it for so long, come up and speak voices with us because your voice actually does make a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think overall, I mean, as a as a person in the industry, as a black person in the industry, you and I both know what the industry's uh, top level uh, um, uh, rule makers are. Right. And a lot of times we're not at the top. So we end up sacrificing some of what we believe in just to get an opportunity. And then you see a situation like this happen again and then again and then again. And, and, and then it's like, like who, this may sound weird, but who, who am I going to continue to dance for when I have to understand the true value that I carry within myself? And Absolutely. we are called upon so much. Hey, can you go out there? I mean, you're very talented. Go out there and do this thing for us. And here, we'll slide you something. So quick question to you. Like, do you think or do you see, obviously, it's been for a long time, that the money part of it is what kind of has us forgetting we're still not getting what's owed to us? Well, here's the thing. Uh, me personally, I think everybody has what they are most concerned with in this whole jambalaya pot of uh, uh, disruption in the country. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that, for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, the thing for me is let's not lose the focus of what this is about. This is about a black man who was stopped and was killed in broad daylight with phones all around them. And he only got he's only being convicted with third degree murder third degree murder is the capri sun yes when it comes to the first second and third for those that don't know it is the capri sun so we're not happy with this verdict you see what i'm saying also the, the other officers that were involved need to be brought to charges as well because if you look at the autopsy report it said that george floyd was died from homicide and not just homicide of the throat, but they also spoke of the back and spine, which it, if, where the car was positioned in the video, you couldn't see that there were other officers behind it all laid out on his on, on, on his body. And, you know, but other thankfully other cameras caught that. And that's on the Internet for people to, to watch and see. But the point is, you know, the looting is what people are starting to talk more about. And, I, and I'm going to be honest, I don't I do not condone violence towards black, white. Anyone. I don't condone any type of violence. I don't condone looting. But let me tell you this, understand that is just an effect. It's not the cause. Black people and brown people in this country are tired of the yes. bull. And we are tired of being treated less than human. And we are tired. And the reason the looting and black people, and, and some black people are just angry and they're in the street. And, I'm, and I understand that. People, people mistake understand for support. I understand that our country, uh, uh, historically, we have been building up this for 400 years, 400 years Plus. of turning the other cheek, 400 years of turning the other cheek, 400 other years of protesting peacefully um, in the 70s and the 60s where dogs were biting black women's breasts because they were dying peacefully. You understand? So uh, right. to really be honest, when it comes to buildings, the one thing I don't like about this country, and here's the, the real truth is we value property more than human lives. Right. We value property more than human lives. And... Uh, we can, as, as minorities, we can burn down what we built for free. You understand? Right. We can burn down what we built for free. 
because that is the only time this country has ever understood something. This country has never understood peace. When the last time we went over and asked some oil, sent some cookies over and said, can we have some of your oil? <laughs> hey, any of your land? Absolutely not. So it's straight yeah. hypocrisy. It's straight hypocrisy. And um, it's not even a white black thing because a lot of, uh, of the, the, the people, like I said, are in the streets are not black. But they, they understand the humanality of it and they see it for what it is because it's been hidden from them for so long. So I personally uh, want the protesting, not the rioting, but the protesting to continue. And I want the, uh, the justice. And even when these officers are brought to justice, let's understand that this is just the beginning. We still yeah. have Sandra Bland. We have so many brothers and, and, and Black people who were killed. And um, as Virginia and, and my platform as an actor, comedian, you and yourself, you know, you and I talked off camera. I said, I don't want to talk about myself on this. I said, it's more important for us to talk about what's going on in our country because as Black men, if we're up here talking about our products and what we're selling, and it has nothing to do with the temperature mm -hmm. of what's going on in this country, then we ourselves uh, are shucking and jiving. You understand? Yeah. And we can't do that, baby. We can't do that. Q, we too cool for that. Q, people need us, baby. <laughs> well, you know, Zeus, the the like another part of this that a lot of people will ask questions about is, um, and I'll put a couple of uh, comments up here. I know this is my wife saying, we can burn down what we built free. That's a word. <laughs> we can burn down what we built for free. So, um, you, you know, like kudos uh, to that. Here's, here's the other part that a lot of people and a lot of uh, black folks have also said, we can do all this, but what are we doing now? Like, do you have any, any suggestions on the next step after, you know, people get justice or after we get justice, after people get, you, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, indicted on these crimes and on these charges? Like, 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 what do you have for or suggestions or even solid knowledge on what people can do? Well, one thing I can say is we have to understand um, that uh, communication is not key. That's not I don't I don't believe that. I think comprehension is key. You can mm. talk to somebody all day. If they do not comprehend the problem of what it is, they cannot, you can communicate to them all day. If I speak French and you don't, I'm talking great French to you, but you don't comprehend. So it doesn't matter about the delivery. So we need to understand that racism in this country is like, um, it's like your grandmother's house in Virginia, who, who's a hoarder. Most of our uh, older family members are hoarders, keep a lot of stuff in their houses. Yeah. In order to clean the house out, one room is a job in itself. Yeah. This is a racist house. and One room is a job within itself. We're not going to take this out with just one problem. You understand? Now, one room is, is, is systematic racism. The other room is the fact that black and brown people don't have the same opportunities and don't know about the tax breaks. We have to educate ourselves. And as black people, you know, we are very uh, lazy sometimes. Right. And, and we don't put towards the effort to vote because voting is where this really is going. We need to vote. Right. We right. need to vote. Right. Vote. And. And before you go any further, like, you know, for anybody that's watching, uh, like Zeus is not saying, well, like we're lazy in the same terms of other people have called us lazy. He's talking, I mean, from what I'm understanding and I'm and you know, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would think that you're talking about like we know what we have to do as far as certain things, but we don't think that is going to make any change. So that can, you know, have a sense of laziness. Is that right or is that different? But what I'm saying is that we as African-Americans, we are we do not take the effort to educate ourselves on the things we need to be educated on. And when I say lazy, I mean that we don't know. And, and when I say lazy, I mean me, myself, me, I, all of us. This is a we thing. And all of us need to educate ourselves more on the law, traffic stops, voting. We don't understand the judicial system. All these things are free information that's on Google so we can get off our Instagrams and off our TikToks and stop trying to be famous and start trying to be influential and be knowledgeable, then yes, I'm saying lazy. And that's what I mean. And this is Zeus's opinion. I'm saying that black people are so special and smart that my grandmother told me and my grandfather say, Zeus, you are too lazy. You are too special and you need to apply yourself. And the problem yeah. is black people don't wanna hear truth. You know what I believe? One thing I love about you is that you say a word that we both agree on, you know, and, and I believe that there's different versions of this word. And my version of quality is telling the truth. That is quality to me because people are tired and the truth, nothing is more true than a black woman, an older black woman that, that loved me. My grandmother would use colorful words when she could not find a word to express it. To me, that yeah. is quality. That's true. And uh, that's balance because anybody who's uh, a certain way all the time is not genuine. 
Now, mind you, there's a time and place for everything. We want to make sure that there's safe spaces for children and people who don't want to hear that type of language, which is why I love platforms like yourself and for you to allow me on it. Thank you, brother. Um, <laughs> but I think I, I really think education and the older people, you know, watch CNN. Don't put on Netflix. Let your kids see what's going on so that our boys and girls understand what they're up against because we're, they don't know the world we're living in because we keep an iPad in front of their face instead of explaining to them who they are and the context and what they're being raised in. That's what I mean by lazy in terms of information. Okay, you, you know, and I'm glad that you cleared that up. And it's interesting because the last point that you made about talk to your children uh, about what value they hold and how beautiful they are. Uh, my wife and I make a point uh, as often, even as recent as last night before we put her to bed. She is like, you know, it's not just me saying it because she's our child, but this like watching her, I get an understanding as to why my parents look at me the way they look at me now. Um, it's not in the way that they used to look at me like, I don't know about this boy. <laughs> you know, like now it's like, like, this is this is my son. Like he's doing all these things and like he came from us. And and I'm looking at my daughter like we look at our daughter like that now because she's doing some just awesome things and then you know whether you say it's tooting your own horn or not but my wife and i we are in a position where what we have we have under the understanding that it wasn't meant for us to have so the pride that we have within ourselves come from okay nothing was passed down to us there wasn't a legacy it wasn't any, you know, any money that said, hey, this is a, uh, you know, a kickstart to you and what you're going to be doing in your life. And we have what we have because we did it from the ground up and we did it together and we're doing it for her so that she has a, a leg up, but not giving her something that she doesn't understand the level of work it takes to get. So we 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 look at her and we talk to her and we let her know her value first. It's like I told her last night. And we told her before you are a woman. But you're a black woman first. You're beautiful. You're different. You are something that other people can't be like. You don't have to be like anybody else. You create your world and you know that there can only be one of you. Let somebody else be the next you. But you be the first you. So. You, 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 you do have to do that as parents to your children, um, talk to them and give them those nuggets of confidence and, and, and you know, and purposefulness. Um, Cause there's a lot of kids that didn't get that. And that's why we see them on both sides, black and white. That's why we see them with crazy views, crazy viewpoints. Um, so, so I appreciate that last nugget that you had there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, now, with you being, um, you know, in the industry, okay, um, I've been out there in LA and I've seen the racial divide in the entertainment industry. And you spent a good amount of time being out there. Like, what is your take or what is your experience on the racial divide, especially in the comedy world? Because there's black nights, there's white nights. And unless you're a white comic that can flow, with the urban flavor, then you don't get on the black night. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what, man? Uh, Hollywood is a large, big, big misconception. And I can only speak from my personal experience. And, um, you know, I've worked at a lot of different studios where, you know, I started off creating for myself. I've always just been a creator. You know what I mean? And I just have gone and created for different platforms like BuzzFeed, like you mentioned. Um, I'm also a voiceover uh, actor for the ID channel. Uh, for those that love those mystery shows, Homicide Cities. Um, June, uh, this actually episode starting this month. I don't know the date, nice. so I should know. But anyway, um, to answer your question, I really haven't experienced a lot of racism in Hollywood because that's not the energy that I even go looking for or give off. You know, I've, I've worked with a lot of white people, black people, any type of person. And it, I think that's my ability to just, I see human beings, you know, uh, a, a, a jerk is a jerk. <laughs> Whether you're black, white, yellow, or green. And, and so I don't judge people based off of gender, right? Sexual orientation or color. So if you're gay and you're a nice person, I just see a nice person. If you're a transgender and a nice person, I just see a nice person. If you're white and a nice, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I give the energy to people that they give me. And Hollywood is a place where, you know, uh, if you're positive, 
and you're genuine with people, they really appreciate that. Like to really be honest, being from Virginia, it was my biggest uh, success tool being out in Hollywood because people would say, oh my God, you're so mannerly. You're not from here. Not like where you from? I'm from Virginia. You know, we just nice, you know, we, we mannerly, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm not too nice to where, you know, I ain't gonna tell you about yourself if you, you know, step out of line, no problem at all. However, I'm a genuine, we're generally nice people and we like to laugh, we joke, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So any, you know, Hollywood is, is changing the ball. Anybody who has a problem in Hollywood is the same person that has a, a problem in their nine to five job. Some people just mm. don't vibe with a lot of people and it has nothing to do with the environment. It has to do with the person because I, I'm around people all day that, that I don't like to work around or may be unpleasurable, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna respect this person to the highest level that I can and work with them in a pleasant way. And then that's just that. But I'm tolerable. And that's what the world needs right now is more tolerance. But, you know, back to the George Floyd thing, you know, personally, um, I, I I think that the first thing we need to do is continue to protest. Yeah. Because uh, if I can speak candidly, you know, police brutality has been going on for decades and it needs to stop. And black leaders like ourselves need to get serious about leading. And I'm not saying we got to go off and be Malcolm X or nothing like that. I'm just saying we need to use our platforms to talk about more than just buffoonery. You get what I mean by that, bro? Like buffoonery. Like as comedians, I don't like the fact that so many people call themselves comedians and then think that they have to go up and tell jokes and make light of everything. Comedians are very intelligent people. And we are charged with the task of explaining to the world what's going on because people are panicked. So let me try to give my chime in on what I feel like is the temperature of what we need to be thinking. First off, we need to be thinking of uh, educating ourselves and our children daily about what's going on in this world. And speaking truthfully, as parents, let's be honest, we were concerned with getting out in COVID and getting back to our haircuts and clubs and spending money than we are our own brothers and sisters dying in the streets. Now, some people go on this, on this, on this is going to hear what I'm saying. Everybody that's your skin folk ain't your kin folk. And that's something <laughs> that my old told me. And, you know, I'm going to leave it that. And because not everybody is uh, concerned until this happened to their children. And I, I'm just, and I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying I'm a vessel. And it's important as an artist, Nina Simone, God bless one of the our most beautiful queens. Nina Simone had a bar I love. She said an artist. An artist's responsibility, as far as I'm concerned, is to reflect the times. Mm. And, and, and that's just that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that we need to hold all police officers accountable. We need to start going to town center meetings. Uh, the whole state of Virginia, we all need to vote, young people. And as comedians and actors, actors and different artists, we need to be coming together to inform the community about what's really going on. But as a community, we need to inform ourselves, go out in the streets, protest, protest, get these white racist people out of office. They are not for unity. They're not for our people. You understand Trump is making a buffoonery of what's going on because he's trying to get reelected and all these things, but that's fine. Black people were smart and not just, and, not, and I don't want to just make this a black people thing. All people that stand for, for that standing with black and brown lives right now, we thank you. White silence is white violence. That means if you're my friend and you're white, if I'm out there fighting for lives, I expect you right out there, Katie, right out there with me, baby. Pump in the fist. Katie. Because you're my friend. <laughs> Katie, pump in the fist. Because if Katie believes that black lives really matter, then Katie wants to be on the front lines and she wants to um, use her white privilege and her voice to, 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 to help others. And to me, that if I was a white white man that's what i would really find pride in doing saying hey i want to be educated on the black community on how i can help i and and and, and black people people who want to learn we're extremely patient we're extremely patient and this country is ready for a new uh wave we're not on that racist thing anymore and you can see because there's so many people out and now you know los angeles has a very peaceful protest but let's just remember trump did send uh, a bunch of people to beat up protests just so he can take a, a selfie and a, and a picture uh, his butt on the sink uh, by, the, by the church so he can get a little selfie by the Bible. Now, that is some thought behavior, but, you know, I'm yeah. going to keep it cool, you know what I'm talking about, because this ain't hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's so tough, and I'm going to be completely honest, and you may not even agree, and I may even lose a few people, but my issue with voting 
And and I've been told this uh, by a good friend of mine who's down in Texas. Um, he he said, I know Q, you feel like you have it figured out because you've done some things and you've pulled your own self up and you don't feel like one person is going to affect your life in a way that you feel you can do it on your own. So like he said, I get that. But he said, but it's not about just you. It's about the other people who may not have that mindset as you. And I'm still wrestling with it, man. I'm be completely honest. I'm wrestling with the fact that we are trained, I feel, to believe after all these years that if we vote somebody in, it doesn't matter. Like people wanted Hillary, just like people wanted Donald Trump. And it was to me, to me, it was the lesser of two evils. So personally, I chose to write my own name in. It was my protest. It was my silent protest. And I wrote my name in. And what that said to me, the statement said uh, almost four years ago, I trust myself that if I do right by people, if I give back to the community, which people who know me know is very visible, I'm always giving back. Um, I never just look out for myself that if I do all those things, then I can at least look myself in the mirror every day and say, you, you, you know what, you're doing what God put you here to do versus me feeling like I'm at the voting booth. I guess I got to pick one or the other. Okay. You know, cause I think that's what we're doing. Like it's not a lot of black people who trusted Hillary, but they felt like because she was Democrat and because it was anti-Trump, they're just going to write in Hillary. But Hillary had skeletons just like Trump had and has skeletons, just like Obama had things that people didn't agree with, but people just are, 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 are groomed to pick the lesser of two evils. So it's like I said, I know I'm going to lose people by thinking that way, but I, I, I'm, I'm struggling as a grown man to understand how can I depend on one person to change the lives of millions if I don't look myself in the mirror and go out and do that and be intentional about it. Right. Well, you know, uh, well, first off, Q, you know, as a man, I can understand that, you know, all of us have our ideologies and, and mainly they're because of the way we grew up. Right. And systematically, the way I grew up and the way you grew up is two totally different eras, places and all that. So, of course, your my, our experiences are going to shape how we view things. Um, if I could just chime in and because I have a uh, maybe I can help give clarity to where you were saying you were wrestling with the whole thing. One thing is um, I don't really talk too much about politics. Right. And the reason I don't is because I think politics is a high school game. Like it's, it's, I don't really take it that seriously. However, I do take the judicial seat, the system seriously and the, the court systems and things like that. And that's what voting is really, really for. You know, it's important for black people for us to understand the foundation of voting, not necessarily who's at the top holding the flag. That's not really, you know, that's a mascot in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Not to say the president isn't as important, but the people who are really making decisions are under the president and making Absolutely. them every day. So, so that's what we need to encourage black people and, and people of color and then poor people in general, because it's not a color thing. It's a, a financial thing. The, the color that matters most in this country is green. You see what I'm saying? So um, I think that for me as a leader, it's important that people understand that I believe voting is important. I may not say the the characters don't really matter. Clinton, you know, uh, you know, Obama, Nixon, it doesn't really matter. The players change, but the game don't. The game don't. This this country has been the way it's been since Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, <clears throat> my brother. The game ain't the game don't change. The players just change. So on the local level is where you really uh, get 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 the people involved because now we have people on the home soil fighting for us and then it trickles up. I personally think if we had uh, a lot of different people from ten years ago, people of color, uh, women that in, in, in leadership positions, we would totally be in a lot better position. Personally, yes, this yeah. country has been ran by the same type of person for the whole time. Yeah. You know, so um, I think that we just need to not get distracted with the uh, the shiny stuff. Like the let's focus on the facts. We need to get justice for George Floyd, as well as um, uh, all the other brothers and sisters that have been systematically brutalized by police. Right? Mm -hmm. If we can donate to those who are out there fighting that need water, these people are getting pepper sprayed. They're getting beat with rubber bullets, and all we can do is sit. You know, like everybody can do something. Everybody don't have to be on the front lines. You can be on making calls, signing petitions. You can, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's really all about us doing one thing 
first and this i think will really help everybody absolutely we have we got to care we got to yep. care and we got to care enough to stop our black dollars our black dollars from going into white pockets or pockets that don't respect our community that's how you stop people with money you see what i'm saying and once we get disciplined as a people to do that then we get organized then we get some results that's a good point and allows me to transition regarding money. I'd like to thank my sponsors. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm a businessman. <laughs> you know it, boy. All right. So uh, just real quick, uh, you know, my sponsors of my quality comedy series, Angels Place Daycare, um, and also Just Dance On, uh, Melinda Mylock. Uh, thank you both for being sponsors and also the sponsor of the show today, uh, T Senior Management. A uh, big shout out to her. Uh, she's my business manager as well, but she's also a talent manager, a project a, a manager, uh, as well as special events. Uh, she's a publicist, consulting. She, she does public relations and uh, she would like you to connect with her. Her information is in the description of this entire live post. So definitely connect with, with her. And real quick, before we continue this conversation, we still got another uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes or so. Um, so the first first um, question, uh, the first uh, trivia question that I would like to uh, give out for those of you who are tuning in and who have been tuning in. Um, when did me and Zeus first meet? Okay. When did me and Zeus first meet? I'll tell you, it was the fall. Okay. It was the fall season. And when did we meet? That's the first trivia question. The first answer, the first correct answer will get um, $25 sent to you, whether it's your cash app or whatever electronic little space that you have. Uh, but the first correct answer. Okay. And so I may not be able to answer it uh, or I may not be able to see it here, but just uh, chime in, put your correct answer and also uh, put in your cash app information too. So that's out there and I'll be able to find you. Okay. So that's the first trivia question. We got another trivia question coming a little bit later, uh, but that's the first one for $25. When did me in Zoo, what year, what year it was during the fall season, but what year did me and Zeus first connect and first meet? Okay, cool. Now, getting back into the rest of the show, um, let me ask you a pretty deep question. Now, I'm a small frame brother, you are a brother that's in shape, uh, you've got the ball head LL Cool J thing going on, uh, <laughs> so that's gonna be intimidating to people who look like me off the top because I'm like, I don't know how to look like that. So I'm going to be pissed off at you. I'm just being completely transparent. But on the real, how, like I feel, hold up, let me just back up. So last week I was talking about, we got to worry about, you know, being targeted just because of the color of our skin. Like our skin is considered a weapon and it's threatening to a lot of white people. Uh, now you combine COVID-19 Right. You combine COVID-19 and we have to wear a mask in public. So now the fear that you already have without a mask. Now we have a mask on and it just heightens that fear. But the question I have for you as a person that has a larger stature, do you feel a little bit more uh, fearful on whether because you've got a daughter? I mean, you are out in the public, but. Like, do you, do you feel like because of your stature, a police officer or whoever is just going to immediately say you're a threat and they're going to just be aggressive? Is water still wet? Like, with your stature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen to what I'm saying. Is water still wet? Is oh, no, no, no. I thought you said what? <laughs> That's what I was saying. No, I'm, saying that I'm saying is water still wet? Uh, yeah. Um, here's the thing, you know. Um, myself as well as the black community no we, we cannot control well i'll just speak for myself i cannot control who uh fears me because i'm not to be feared if somebody fears me or anybody else or if i fear let's say i fear you right that has nothing to do with you q that is an insecurity or something that i have created that you know nothing about how can you control that how can you control somebody being intimidated by the way you were built i'm a black man i'm a king I was built in this greatness. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? You're a black man, you're a king, you was built in this greatness. Same thing with all our brothers and sisters. So I'm not gonna shrink my spine for anybody. I'm six foot one. If I shrink my spine, I'll be five foot six by Tuesday. I can't do that. 
However, I do believe in uh, the way that I carry myself. I know that I have to carry my be very cognizant of the way that I carry myself because if if the largest person in the room is in control and you know he's personable, then usually everybody feels comfortable. And I'm aware of when people may be uncomfortable because I'm a confident person. When people say aggressive, you know, it's as black people, when you've been through so many things, you really see how resilient you are and you just become unfearful of things that most people are fearful of every day. I mean, <clears> you know what I'm saying? I had to have a conversation with my, with, with my, uh, you know, my, 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 my daughter's mom to say, hey, listen, um, we need to really talk about if something were to happen to me, right? Um, how I would want you to explain that to our child. And mm -hmm. even, you know, she understood, she she wanted to go out into the protest and I had to, uh, you know, say, hey, listen, if something happened, we had to have that conversation. If something happened to one of us that we would carry what, you know, what we would do with our child. So it's it's it's, it's all, it's, 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 it's a lot of roots in this thing, man. It, the roots are the racism, but it's so many branches of the problem, I should say. But I think the biggest thing is, um, I can't control people's narrative of me. A tiger can't change uh, what he can't change his stripes. You know, how are we supposed to change how we're built or made? And uh, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm just not in the business of changing myself for anybody. If somebody's uncomfortable by me, I, I would rather deal with the uncomfortableness and have a conversation. Right. Of why you feel uncomfortable. You know, okay. I'm, I'm real cool with conversations. I'm really good with that. You and I, we've had so many conversations about you know, uh, things that we've never didn't agree on. And they've gone so beautifully because of just that, that type of respect that you and I have. And that's just a person, perfect example of that. Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> as I was saying, and I'm gonna get into this question. My wife has asked, uh, Zeus, do you think the black community has come together, uh, and unified before the rest of the community? Hold up. Do you think that the black community has to come together and unify before the rest of the community joins us in the fight? That's a that's a good question. And I'll give my quick opinion on it. Um, there's a. A resounding yes, because here's the way I look at things. How can we ask for other people to respect and join us if we ourselves you know, or doing it part time. And it doesn't negate the fact that it's just wrong to treat us as three fifths of a man or even less than that. But it does say something to me that if we put out negative energy about ourselves and if we don't come together, how can we expect anyone else to say, well, you guys seem to really Every time I turn around, you care about stuff. A perfect example, the Chinese community, the Asian community. When they come into this country, they are together. You cannot infiltrate anything that they do, right? And when it comes to us, the one thing that breaks us apart, like you mentioned earlier, the green, the money, and you know who knows it? The powerful ones at the top, from the ones that's running record labels to the ones that's running things in the world. All they know they have to do is Hey, here's some money. Don't worry about that college education. I can get you a million dollar contract to go play sports. And we listen because we forget the value that we have. If we have that education, they know what they're doing by cutting us off from getting that education that can put us on that level. But they do it and we fall for it every time. So just based on that question, do you think that we have to come together and unify before the rest of the community joins us? You know what I when I when I when I ask that question first off great question. Um, what I think about is you remember that movie The Lion King when um, all the lions finally got together and fought uh, Scar and the, yeah. the hyenas and they were fighting all the lions together. However, you had Pumbaa, you had Rafiki, monkeys, people who were not a part of the lioness, right? They were helping fighting too. But before that could happen, all the lions got together and jumped on Scar first. What I'm saying is, as African American people, we have to buy, to get together, right, and, and and all all on the same page together. Now, the reason why the you said you mentioned the Asians, that's a really good example. See, the Asians, um, you know, they have their systematic problems that they've had to deal with in the past. But the reason why they can be still stuck together is because they didn't have since the beginning of time their ancestors, black people, since we got to this country, 
we've had to deal with uh, not one peaceful night as a man in our household uh, with our family. So mm -hmm. explain to me how as a black man, um, not even my grandfather, right? I've never, we've never been able to be men in this country to our women. So how am I a man back in the slavery days and as black people, how can we come together if a white person can just tell have sex and rape our child, our woman, walk away and we can't do nothing but say, yes, sir, no, sir. And then as we go on, the things that black people have invented in this country to make money, right? We've earned our due, have been stolen from us, right? And taken. So we've earned it. It's been taken away. We built this country for free. We haven't got reparations for that. So we're telling our people, and that's why it's very important for uh, ignorant leaders to just shut up. Because if you haven't educated <laughs> yourself on the history of this country and what black people have been through, you are part of the problem. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Because how are you gonna tell people to make money? Like, that's like me saying, hey Q, come on, make some money. And you done worked for two years and every time you get a paycheck, Q, every two weeks, somebody take it and spend it from you. But I'm telling you next week, make some money. And you need to get your check. But every day I'm, I'm your dad saying, you need to get your check. You're like, dad, people are stealing it from me. I'm earning it and I'm, I'm not, and I don't wanna fight them because if I do, I'm gonna go to jail. That's what we're telling. So I, when white, when black people we tell ourselves, hey, just do this and do that. Listen, you are clearly, clearly having taken time to ingest the whole spectrum of it. It's not just one, it's not just one lane. You feel what I'm saying? And right. Asians can do that because they've always stuck together and they've done it. Now, African-American people, can we get to that? Absolutely. Absolutely, we can get there. All we need is for one thing is to empower ourselves financially. All of us are in the house right now, right? Looking for money. How many of us have gone online and figured out how to make money with our phones instead of just taking selfies with them? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You need right. information. When you give you give us information, ooh, we are somebody serious. We somebody yeah. serious. Yeah, and that's the one thing that, that that I know as an entrepreneur that had to make a decision, and I made this decision years ago, that I can either Get this educated. Okay, like this is how crazy it is for those that may not know my background. So, or my rhyme or reason. The reason why I went after, or, okay, I'll back up. The reason why I went into the Navy wasn't just to serve my country because I loved my country so much. I was young. I don't know what I loved about my country at the age of 17, but I knew that I would get a college education out of it. And no one in my family had ever. Complete. I think my stepdad had gone to college, but didn't complete it, but nobody else had gone or even completed. So that was my drive. Okay. So I get in the Navy. And that, and to, your point, to your point, I don't want to take it, I don't cut you off, but that was, a, that was the thing. You understand? In that generation where you came from, that was the next big hurdle mm -hmm. for black people to get over. And so that you made it as a black person. You know what? That's important to my generation and my family. I need to do that. That's exactly what this is. Now, as the time changes, college is not the standard anymore because the world has changed. And that's what I mean by we have to update ourselves on the world and information because I was talking to my mom. My mom was, you know, was born, you know, in the 50s, you know, grew up in the 60s, 70s. The world is different from how it was from her now. And, and, and it's very, you know what I'm saying? So if you're not updated, if you don't get your updates on your laptop, you're going to still be working on your old processor, baby. And we over here in the future. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I, I, to your point, a lot of African Americans, college was that standard. So I understand why that was so important for you to go and do that. Absolutely. Because I did the same thing. I, it was important for me to go to college because nobody went to college for me, you know, uh, uh, in my family that went fresh out of college. And I did that. And I even stayed on campus because uh, they wanted me to have the total college experience, even though I went to Norfolk State. And that was important for me to do. Stay on campus. Because going back home and going to college was just like high school for me. I learned on campus how to deal with different people, whether, you know, and it wasn't just black people there, but it was so many different kinds of black people. If you could be around a bunch of different kinds of black people, you could be around anybody. <laughs> you know, That's facts. Military, so many people, but it, it's, it widened my palate for people. And because of that, you know, I'm able to go off and I have friends that are in Africa now. I have friends that are all over the world, white, black, gay, uh, transgender. I have friends all over because it's about people and humanity. And uh, I, I, I want to get this message to everybody that we need leadership. We need more yeah. leaders and less celebrities. We need more leaders and less uh, influencers. You see what I'm saying? We need more men 
that's going to speak for something and not uh, put down uh, each other, not put down other men, not put down women, and not and and really uh, start to make ways and stop making excuses. And and we're vessels, bro. We yeah. cannot. Trump is a very, our president is a very selfish man, and you could just see from the way how he treated people just so he could take a little uh, selfie uh, picture for his tender. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like we really gotta. We really got to ask ourselves, and I ask myself this every day, like, Zeus, are, are you influential? Who are you helping? What are you leaving behind? You know, you are you going to leave your daughter, some followers? Who cares about that? I want to leave something that where people can really be uh, inspired upon, right? And uh, we can all do our part. We can all do yeah. our part, but, but we need to be fearless as men because I'm speaking to all the black men out there. We got to have spines. Yeah. These women, these babies need to see that they are being led by warriors, not, 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 not little boys that want to play. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not coming at anybody. I'm not coming at anybody. I'm just saying, as men, we are the yeah. foundation. We're not perfect, right? We're not perfect. But we need to be out here building for these women and these children. These children can grow and these women can feel safe because the black woman is the most unprotected thing in the world. Right, right. Well, you know, okay. as my... um. As my wife, uh, you know, has uh, said because she was told this, but she also tells our daughter, um, you know, oh, and re real quick, uh, shout, shout out to everybody that's tuning in. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Jerron. Uh, hey, Margie. Uh, Tarishma. Um, Avi is in the building. Uh, Shaughnessy out of Texas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's people from Florida. Ashley, my uh, co-host of Living 757, she was on here. So just shout out to everybody that's chiming in. I certainly do appreciate it. Um, my wife, uh, you know, has mimicked the, the word or, or has said um, black women have it twice as hard. And well, they have to work twice as hard to be half as good as their competition because women already get the shaft. But when you're a black woman, all it takes is you mm -hmm. turning your head like, well, what did you say? Oh, she has an attitude. Oh my God. So it's like they can't wear their hair natural because if they wear their hair natural, yeah. oh, you Afrocentric yeah. now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you're correct. Like women do have it the worst. Uh, black women get it two times as harsh as any woman um, or just as any person. And that's what the, the whole thing, like the whole dynamic of uh, building your kingdom, because as you mentioned, we are kings and they're queens, but building your kingdom, uh, building that legacy, right? Um, and you mentioned earlier, like we're so infatuated with money, like money, and showing people that we got stuff. Like, do you realize, like, a lot of people who show their materialistic things, I understand some people are just proud. Hey, I got a new car. God bless me with a car, blah, blah, blah. Or, hey, I got this. We're so interested in showing people that we can be just like you or just like them and have money and buy these things. And a lot of times we haven't even put uh, any savings up for our children. We haven't done things that align oh. with future growth. Well, let me say this, Q. I know, I know we're running out of time, and I, I hit my headphone speed. I'm not running low before you cut off. But I will say this, you know, as the men, we need to put more responsibility on ourselves. And this is just my opinion. Women, a woman and a child will walk into a house that's built and that's right and that's protected if that man goes there and builds it. We need to put more responsibility on ourselves and stop focusing on the problems and start being more solutions oriented. Problems are always going to be there. A child can walk in a room and point to a spill in the room. We need to walk in and we need to see strong brothers and sisters to say, hey, what are we going to do to solve the problem? And the problem comes with conscious leadership. And any black woman, I don't care how strong she is, no matter what she says, would really appreciate some strong black brothers stepping up and making ways instead of making excuses. You know what I'm saying? And we can just do that by just doing our part here and what we're doing now and empowering brothers like ourselves and using our minds. You know what I'm saying? And teaching our black people how to put dollars in their pocket from using the internet and using social media and things where they don't have to go out and get nine to fives from people. That's what I'm about. I'm about teaching people how to put money in their pockets from doing what you're going to do. That's how you Absolutely. create, that's create money in the black dollars, you know what I'm saying, in the community. 
Dope, dope. Well, look, because uh, I don't want your headsets to run out. Um, I know that you don't really want to focus. <laughs> look, look, uh, you ain't going to Teddy rally me in this situation, bro. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Boy, don't get Teddy. <laughs> yeah. So um, before we do get out of here, just, uh, you know, because you, you, you speak a lot about what you know, and that's about being an influencer um, online. You made a way for yourself. I think this is what back in 2013, 2011 or something when you created the first hump day romance. And for those of you out there uh, that may be watching uh, over the Valentine's week, uh, a skit that we shot, uh, what, in 2017? 20, 2016, uh, actually 2015. Okay, right. So we shot that skit and and it hit uh, the week of Valentine's, but it was about saying honest wedding vows. What if we said honest wedding vows? That was a, uh, you know, a skit that you created and uh, you gave me an opportunity to, you know, to act and be a part of it. But just talk a little bit about why you wanted to create this platform, Hump Day Romance. Like, you know, you're not a relationship expert or are you a relationship expert? Or do you consider yourself one? Yeah. I don't. I don't know any of these titles because I didn't write them. So I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I can only tell people what I am. You know what I'm saying? And Humpty Romance is a relationship sh uh, sketch comedy show, uh, very similar to uh, the Dave Chappelle show or any type of variety show where I talk about relationships in the world. And uh, each episode has different sketches and things. That, it's just my opinion about the way I see the world. It's no facts. I'm not an expert or nothing. This is just what I think. And I'm just, you know, trying to put some common sense out in the world. And if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube. You can put Hump Day Romance or Top Rope Zeus. And uh, I have a brand new, you know, I'm working on a brand new uh, full season of it. But you can watch the first two seasons. And I'm about honesty. I think people are full of, full of it. And I feel like we can't really be honest and grow if we can't be honest about our flaws and who we are. So Hump Day Romance is, you know, and of course it's comical, of course, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, check it out. You know, if you're a couple or you're single and you want to get a laugh and, you know, some type of knowledge and thinking, uh, I consider it to be a very quality show, you know, so check me out. Absolutely. And those things have gone, those videos have gone viral for a reason because they are funny and, you know, you know, on the low, they really do hit people viral. in the gut. Huh? Viral because viral you hear time you and something, people, it goes viral. I got to keep you, I got to put you on payroll. Cause you're in it. <laughs> like hey, uh, hey, um, Again, well, a, a viewer one wants to know where can they find it again? Like on YouTube? Uh, just Google Hump Day, yeah, Hump Day Romance. Just Google it. Hump Day Romance, everything will come up. But uh, or you can type in Top Rope Zeus, T O P R O P E Z E U S. Everything spelled like I got educated. Um, and uh, yeah, so anything and yeah, check out the show and put in the comments. I uh, I, I, I talk to the comments, my social media from Instagram, everything is Top Rope Zeus, man. Absolutely. And uh, fin final is <laughs> that Hump Day Romance, a great title because, yeah, because it actually is. I mean, it's really good. Good. Uh, uh, shout out to Tarishma for tuning in. Um, and lastly here, just just based on everything that's going on. Number one, let me be the first or the next one to tell you. I love you, man. Um, I love your I love what you're doing um, in the industry that you're in. And the fact that you're, you know, back in the area now, you're ready to bring back some uh, really dope stuff from out in L.A. back to V.A. Um, and, and we are happy to have you back here. Number one. Um, look, I don't know who's eating or who's crunching. Is that me or is that you? I told you, my, you don't know when to wrap it, bro. I told you my headphones are gone. You don't know when to say the show is over. Look, unplug your headphones and talk directly on your phone. All right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, it sounds like somebody eating. Yeah. Well, anyway, let me say, man, thank you for having me on the platform. I truly appreciate it, man. And of course, you know, um, everybody out there, please stay involved. Um, do something. You know, we got to do something, y'all. If you're a black person, you care about black lives, vote, talk to your people, go out, protest, show your kids, tell them what we're up against so that the next this generation can really go further. I appreciate y'all, man. And uh, if y'all want to talk, or further DM me on my social medias. We can talk more to the quality king. I am Top Rose Zeus. Live your dreams, not your reality. And thank you for having me, Mark. All right, man. Thank you again, Zeus. All right, man. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have reached our, our threshold. First of all, thank all of you. Um, I believe one person got the first trivia question right. I have 50 total dollars to give away and nobody, well, and one person got the first trivia question. That was, uh, the year is 2014. That's the first time Zeus and I first encountered each other. Um, so, um, Avi, I believe you got that. And the next trivia question before I get out of here, because I know I got to do, I have to do a closeout. Um, regarding some of the stuff we talked about, uh, thank you to Rishma and everybody else that has tuned in. I certainly appreciate y'all. Uh, next week, as a matter of fact, before I do this trivia question, next week, a uh, special guest, a uh, comedian from out in L.A., my my comedy brother, he runs one of the top nights, Chocolate Sundays, at the Laugh Factory in L.A. He's been on Nickelodeon. He's been on... Um, Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, BET, Comic View, uh, Last Comic Standing. Uh, like he's creme de la creme, you know, as far as some comics that uh, I have booked for the show coming up. But uh, his name is Ron G. Y'all can look him up. But very, very, very funny, brother. Next week is going to be uh, entertaining. We'll get back to a little bit more of the laughs, um, and, you know, but tonight was very interesting and it was very engaging. And so I appreciate everybody. Uh, for staying on and for chiming in and for asking your questions. So it's like I said, before we get out of here, thank you again to all my sponsors. Thank you again to Top Rope Zeus. Um, also, let me make sure I have it right here. We are, yeah, uh, it's going to be next Tuesday. So next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, y'all have to make sure y'all tune in to that one, okay? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the last thing that I have here, what what company that, uh, and I had this in, in his intro, but what company did Zeus work for while he was out in LA? Major uh, social, comp social media type of a company. Like they put out a lot of, you know, uh, skits. Um, and I'll just give you a hint. This is for $25. $25. Yeah, okay, you ready? Last name Feed. So the first person that puts that company's name, you will get and put in your cash app so I can make sure that I send it directly to you. All right. I already gave away the first $25. But what what company did Zeus work for while he was out in LA? Major, major uh content producing company and the last name of that company is Feed, F-E-E-D. So whoever answers that before I close this live off, I will make sure that you get that money. $25 right to you. Just trying to help out the community. Um, and that $25, no, I'm sorry, the entire $50 tonight was um, sponsored by uh, our uh, show's sponsor, uh, T Senior Management. Uh, she blessed me with $50. Um, you know, to be a part of this show and I wanted to give it out. I don't want to keep it for myself. So all you got to do is answer that question. We already got $25 gone to Avi who answered the first question. When did me and Zeus meet in 2014? That was the answer. And then the next question is what company did Zeus work for when he was in LA? All right. He was in LA for three years. What company was it? And the last name of that company is feed. So feed, think about it. What goes before feed? And just put that answer in the comments and uh, and I'll make sure that you get this money. OK, cool. So thank you all again for tuning in. Oh, uh, Avi is is like you, you just keep getting all the answers fast. So looks like Avi got $50 tonight. So I'll get with you, Avi, uh, to pay you that money. Uh, thank you guys again. And thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you all. You know, if there's any suggestions for. Uh, topics or if you like the flow or if you don't like the flow, just give me uh, just some feedback, constructive feedback. I just want to get better. And let me leave you guys with this. Just because a person has this on and you don't know who they are, doesn't mean they are a threat to you. You get a chance to know people first before you judge them. That's what I believe this country is about. You know people. You understand people. You come together and you unite. We can't um, 
discredit the people how they feel. OK, if there's one thing I've learned, you can't tell somebody how they feel. OK, but you can empathize with how people are feeling and what they're dealing with. So try to avoid discrediting somebody's feelings because you don't understand it. OK, do more loving each other, do more listening to each other, do more, you know, organizing and understanding with each other. And by all means, if you're going to go out and protest, do it peacefully. It's no secret that somebody or some group of people are setting things up to make it look like we're just violent, dangerous people out here peacefully protesting. You can't tell me a black man that wants to be treated equally and tr be treated fair. You cannot tell me that we don't understand how to be peaceful, to ask for things that we want that really should be given to us. So instead of asking, we really should be demanding, but you can't tell me on one end we're asking no justice, no peace, or we're yelling no justice, no peace. And then we're throwing a brick through a window. That doesn't make any sense. So we know that there are people being planted in all of these cities to cause havoc that gives the police a reason to shoot, that gives the president a reason to say, you know, if your governors aren't going to, you know, do anything to protect your city, I'm going to send the military in and do the damage myself. Okay. You can't tell people how they feel, but you can empathize, 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 empathize with these people. Okay. Just because they look like this, a person that looks like this could be a lawyer. It could be anything. So just keep that in mind, people. And the one thing that I will tell to my white brothers and sisters that are tuned in, remember this. Just because you tell us you're not a racist, that doesn't make us feel comfortable. You also have to say right behind that, I'm also anti-racist which now makes sense that you're not a racist, but you don't like people that are racist as well. So we can come together. Okay. I say let's stand united in the States so we can be a part of America, United States of America. That's what it is for us. So I love you all. Thank you all for being a part of the show and thank y'all for tuning in. And like I said, We'll be back next week, next Tuesday with Ron G. Y'all don't want to miss that. This guy, big time. So y'all have a good night. Love everybody. Y'all be safe and be safe if you're going to be out there protesting. Do it peacefully. All right? Take care.